Honorable Minister of Information, our Chief Host, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Permanent Secretaries here present, the DGs, Departmental Directors, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors here, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I think the coincidence of National Planning Commission's presentation coinciding with that of foreign affairs, even though it's, it's, it's by, by accident, but I think uh, in reality there is a very good uh, link between the two. First of all, as you heard from the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, spent considerable amount of time focusing on really the new focus on economic diplomacy. The second one is that the National Planning Commission has the responsibility for the coordination of development partners' activities. And typically, uh, to get just one example of that, in bilateral economic partnerships, agreements, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs usually signs the agreement. And then the responsibility for uh, monitoring, tracking is that of uh, uh, that of national planning. So very close relationship. But what are we doing here today? I want to start by that. What are we doing here today? It is essentially a continuation of the annual general meeting of Nigeria Incorporated. Those of you who are from the private sector are familiar with companies, they issue annual reports, to shareholders. Shareholders discuss it, they fix a date for the annual general meeting and they come and the management of the company addresses the shareholders. The president started it off with the Democracy Day. He issued a midterm report which we have distributed here to all of you. And this, basically you people here in particular the media, because Nigeria is so big, not every shareholder can come into a room for a meeting. So you are the proxies for Nigerians. You are holding the proxy, and what we are doing is the continuation of the annual general meeting. As you heard, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs actually showed you the annual report of the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's part of a process that has been ingrained by President Goodluck Jonathan. He is one of the first ministers of the block with their annual report. But other ministers have also produced annual reports. Education, I don't want to mention because some will say, well, you didn't mention me. But several, and that is where we are heading. Every minister at the end of the year will produce an annual report which is going to be made available to who? The Nigerians who are the shareholders of Nigeria Incorporated and we will continue to have these uh, annual, uh, um, annual events, which again, we have to give credit to the Honorable Minister of Information for this ministerial platform, which, which provides the, uh, the, the basis or the venue for the event. And as I said, the President started it off on Democracy Day, and I said on that day that through that process, Mr. President is scoring quite a number of firsts. First, he was the first president that on the day he was being inaugurated as president, May 29, 2011, he had a document which was a representation of all the things that he had promised to do for Nigeria in the transformation agenda. And we've given copies of that today. On the exact anniversary, midterm, he came out with a very detailed report, which is the midterm review of that transformation agenda to show what has been achieved, what are the remaining challenges. And we've given copies of that again. For any of you that are very studious, you can take the two. This is what was promised. This is what has been delivered. At least you can, if you have the time, you can do that. He was also the first president to sign performance contracts with ministers to hold ministers responsible 
for certain commitments in terms of not just you are elected to enjoy the office or to wander about with sirens all over the place. What are you going to be delivering to Nigerians? And this was captured and signed into a performance contract. And basically, all these plat platforms are giving Nigerians a feedback on the commitments that we have made to Mr. President and indirectly to Nigerians. So, my presentation obviously is going to be partly my own bit as to what I have been doing as Minister of National Planning. The can we have the by way of introduction um, okay just the outline the MPC mandate, which I will skip over very quickly, the state of the Nigerian economy, and can we, okay, the, can we have slide eight, please, eight. Who is, who is control? Okay. Now, as I said, I will quickly go through this section, um, basically again to show we've distributed copies of the transformation agenda, the vision document, to show that there's, like the Honorable Minister of Information said, we're trying to get Nigeria back to systematic planning again, um, uh, and, and the vision and the transformation agenda and all that have been distributed. The next slide shows the establishment of the National Planning Commission by Act Number no. 12 of 1992. Who is operating this? I'm on slide nine. Maybe I'll be telling you next. Okay, just slide nine, please. Yes. Um, the commission was established by Act Number no. 12 of 1992, uh, subsequently amended by Act Number no. 71 of 1993. The next slide shows the uh, three parastatals under the commission, the National Bureau of Statistics, Center for Management Development, and the Nash Nigerian Institute for Social and Economic Research. The DGs of that have already been introduced. On slide 12, you have the outline of the mandate of the National Planning Commission. Since you have copies, I'm not going to go through those, but it is usually we use the mandate of the, each ministry as a basis for setting out what it has to deliver to Nigeria. So, strategic planning. The various macroeconomic policies implemented have broadly yielded positive outcomes. And on the next slide you see, starting with the GDP performance, it's been robust GDP performance growth of about an average of 7.01% in 2011 and 2012. The GDP growth rate uh, in the first quarter of 2013 is also s over 6%, and 8 out of the 14 broad sectors surpass their growth targets in the transformation agenda. And these 8 are solid minerals, financial institutions and insurance, building and construction, transport, education, roads, and estate development, public administration and other services. The growth also in particular has been driven largely by the non-oil sector of the economy, with agriculture growing at about 27.64%, wholesale and retail at 28.4%, and telecommunications at 24.3%. Now, clearly, if you are not in some of these sectors, you will say, well, the economy is not doing well. And perhaps understandably, 
Ask people in these sectors, and they will tell you a different story. And that is actually the nature of, of, of economic growth anyway. It's not possible for all sectors to be growing at the same time or at the same pace. Our move towards Vision 2020 is on course. Nigeria moved eight positions in the past three years in the global GDP ranking. Uh, we moved from number 44 in 2010 to number 36 in 2012. Again, that is, you know, broadly a uh, positive. Uh, we are moving in the right direction. Three steps in, in uh, sorry, eight, eight steps in three years is clearly an indication. And most of the, 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 the recent meeting of the Honorary International Investors Council has just concluded last week. And the reports from industry, from agriculture, from all indicate that we are really uh, moving positively towards our target of 2020. We recorded the highest foreign direct investment uh, inflow of about 7 uh, billion US dollars in 2012, overtaking South Africa for the first time. Uh, this was followed a remarkable rise of 8.9 billion in 2011. This performance is expected to be sustained in the medium term, given the massive reform measures being implemented. Whichever sector you look at, reforms are taking place and these are beginning to yield results. On the price level, inflation is coming down. The latest figure released by the uh, National Bureau of Statistics is uh, 9%. So we are down from double-digit inflation to single digit and the prognosis is quite good uh, for the future. The market indicators in terms of the uh, stock exchange and other uh, capital market uh, uh, areas, uh, again, the uh, stock exchange has almost fully recovered uh, to the 20, 2008 position when we had the serious collapse of the market. The external sector is doing pretty well. The growth in non-oil exports averaged 29.57% in 2011 and 2012. This surpassed the target we set in the transformation agenda of 25.92%. The balance of trade was also uh, positive and grew at 13.301%. Uh, Foreign direct investment, as I mentioned, 7.97 billion in 2011 and 2012. My next, in fact, important point is home remittances. Look at the figure of home remittances. It rose from 19.2 billion in 2009 to 21.89 billion in 2012. The good story here is that foreign direct remittances are now higher than the total of foreign direct investment and overseas development assistance that Nigeria gets. What does this mean? That Nigerians abroad, and many of you are probably watching this program or you are online with us. Nigerians abroad in the diaspora are, are showing more um, more interest in their country. They are showing more confidence. They are voting with their pockets for Nigeria. And what I say to all of you there is, first of all, there are tremendous amounts of opportunities back home, whether it's to do business or to work for government or whatever. Come back home and be part of the transformation. But if you can't come back, at least continue to vote with your pocket. Continue to send the money back home because it's contributing positively uh, to the progress of the country. <laughs> While much progress has been made, especially with the macroeconomy, clearly there remain some challenges. Now, this is where people say, but there are still a lot of people unemployed. There's still a relatively high level of poverty. That's true. 
So we're not kidding ourselves that all the problems have been solved. And that's why there are specific programs targeted at addressing this. The issue of security is a challenge, but you can see the action that the government has taken and is clearly beginning to have a positive impact. Addressing the issue of unemployment and underemployment, addressing the issue of poverty, there are very specific programs, sector-wide sometimes, or specific. And I've just given an example of several of them. The SHUAP program, the UN, which is also part of the SHUAP, the Agri Transformation Agenda. If there is anything, and I'm happy that the Minister of uh, Agriculture has already been here and made his presentation, that will be simultaneously address the issue of unemployment and poverty. One single sector that will probably contribute the most, it is the agricultural sector. And the transformation that is taking place is so massive that I will just give you one example. Last week, we were talking with the governor of Kebbi State, which is one of the 10 or more northern states where the dry season rice was grown. And I congratulated him for the amount of work that they have done. You know what he said? He said, in fact, now what they are doing with agriculture, because of what they are doing, he has banished poverty in KB State. Because what he said is, unless you are really lazy, there is no way that with the resources, land and other resources that they have in KB, that as a youth, that you cannot make an average of one to five million a year from growing rice and other agricultural crops. So clearly, you can see that these are ways in which, and the transformation agenda, obviously working closely with the state governments, is paying closer attention to this. Now this is the broader perspective. Obviously, as national planning, we're interested in the broader perspective, as well as the specifics of what are going on in the states. But I will just focus more now on the specific things that we have done over the last year. Over the last two years, we've championed various strategic initiatives at the federal and the state levels and implemented several reform initiatives. The major reform initiatives are, first of all, institutionalization of strategic planning process, not only at the federal level, but because of the nature of our organization. Our law actually provides that we should also provide coordination with the lower tiers of government. So we are working at the federal level and we are working with the states because it's a federation. Uh, we are not directing them to do anything but in a cooperative manner we are getting the states to also appreciate the need to have national coordination in terms of planning. We have institutionalized also the performance management system. The contracts, the, first of all, we've drawn up what we call ministerial uh, performance indicators. And what each minister is presenting here is basically the scorecard of the ministry in great detail with key performance indicators targeted at not so many meetings that we'll have, not how many trips we are going to make, but what specific services are we going to render to the Nigerian people. And this is a process that has become ingrained now, uh, thanks very much to the support of Mr. President and the Vice President to the whole process. Under the performance management systems, we have established a specialized M&E department we have also developed KPIs for tracking service delivery for all MDAs, together working with MDAs. We have developed performance agreements for ministers and key government officials. The 2012 performance contract agreements were signed between the ministers and Mr. President, and the regular ministerial briefings that have been taking place since December. At every council meeting, at least two ministers present their scorecard to Mr. President and indirectly by coming out to join the Honorable Minister of Foreign and Information to present their reports, also accounting to the Nigerian public. 
other media reform initiatives are to do with data generating process, which is spearheaded by the National Bureau of Statistics. We have encouraged the establishment of state statistical bureau, Alfax. So the generation of correct and adequate statistics is very critical, not only at the national level, but also at the uh, sub-national level. We have also initiated a process to begin to calculate GDP, not only at the national level, but also at the state level, so that we have some sense of the size of the Enugu economy, the size of the Kano economy, the size of the rivers economy. This will help policy makers in the state as well at the federal level. And work is going on. We hope very soon that we should be at least the pilot states. Uh, and we're working very closely with the states for them to do it themselves because it's not the responsibility of the federal government. But we must do it in a cooperative manner. Um, we have also developed a development assistance database where all the development partners have keyed in and are generating data uh, about the, all the activities all over the country. Uh, this will also help, uh, is helping the development partners to see information not only about themselves, but also about other development partners, what they are doing and how successful their projects have been. Another core mandate is research and advice, policy research and advice to national and even uh, sub-national governments because a number of sub-national governments have sought our assistance at least to work with their own planning and statistical agencies to develop, to give some policy advice. But here, for the national government in particular, we conducted several, several policy-based research studies and I've just given some, a sample of those. Educational manpower supply study in Nigeria, scrutinize elite the deconstruction of cabals in the Nigerian political economy. Just, I wouldn't have to go through all of them, but it's just to show sometimes we take specific topics, specific areas, and give advice. We've also done a number of policy dialogues. The first annual NISA policy dialogue on social economic development and, and, and so on and so forth. These are pictures of, I think the next slide, of some of these uh, policy dialogues that we have done. Uh, we've also done workshops and training programs for the police, for uh, the ICRC and several other institutions, especially through our Center for Management Development, which has the responsibility of coordinating management development, management training all over the country. But it also provides management training directly especially through uh, their off, uh, facilities in Shangisha, in Lagos. Another mandate is ensuring effective formulation and coordination of national development plans. And I've told you the Vision 2020 is a longer term plan. We have then the first national implementation plan of the Vision, which is a four-year national plan. The transformation agenda is that aspect that has to do with the federal government covering the particular uh, role that Mr. President wants to play during his uh, uh, term, 2011 to 2015. Uh, the midterm review of the transformation agenda, uh, these are all uh, uh, things that have been done. In this respect too, we are working on producing a national integrated infrastructure master plan. This is to we have a lot of sectoral plans now. We have a power sector master plan, we have a gas master plan, we have a road sector master plan, we have an education plan. But sometimes these plans are not talking to each other. And we have decided to work on a much more integrated national infrastructure master plan. Uh, a lot of work has been done, an interim one has been presented. And we are hoping that the final one will be ready in August uh, this year. Also, another responsibility of the National Planning Commission is ensuring effective formulation and coordination of uh, the development assistance uh, from the um, 
are development partners, which I will say a little bit more about. Institutionalizing monitoring and evaluation system for enhanced performance, which is slide 31. Uh, as I said, some of the key activities there are joint development of the KPIs with the ministries, data verification process for 2011 M&E performance. So it's not that we just report or the ministers report. We also go out physically together with the ministries to check and verify some of these claims. And that's why the media, you can help us. We've given you what has been done. What we expect you to do now is to say, yes, we can verify that this has been done. Or if you want to take us up, please do so, based on the facts that we have given out. We have undertaken joint monitoring and evaluation of national and sub-national projects. And some of those are listed on slide 32. The national and sub-national health projects, the 2006 to 2011 tertiary education trust fund projects, federal government water projects in all the states, special intervention fund for agriculture projects, we have visited most of them, community-based agricultural rural development projects, the DFID education sector support program in Nigeria, partnership for transforming health systems programs, and UNDFA projects in 11 states. These are all the projects that we have uh, physically uh, gone out to verify and check so that people will not say, well, you are just reporting what you have not seen. Uh, again, some of the pictures of some of the projects uh, on the next few slides, 33, 34. Another important function of the National Planning Commission is enhancing development assistance coordination. And here, We've done a number of very specific things. First, we reviewed 488 joint and binational agreements, the bilateral cooperation agreements that Nigeria has signed with several other countries. We did a, a massive review of all of them, identifying those that are active, those that are not so active, and what are the causes, especially those that Nigeria is not taking full advantage of, uh, so that we can take better advantage of these bilateral agreements. We also reviewed the ODA policy and we have a revised ODA policy for the country. We are producing operational manual for development assistance database, uh, developing competencies uh, to handle the de development assistance database framework, and regular donor coordination meetings held under uh, our coordination to try and get to make sure that the donors are doing things that are in the best interest of Nigeria, not just going all over the place and spending money. Then official engagement with INGOs like uh, WAMI, UNDP, the World Bank, and other donor agencies. We have also done a number of capacity building uh, in cooperations with, with a number of donors that have been quite useful. Uh, GTZ, uh, 15 people were trained on performance management in Malaysia. Uh, our regular uh, support from China, Korea, and India in particular uh, with training programs for Nigerians and other IDP, International Development Partners, uh, have also uh, assisted in this regard. Again, pictorial, uh, some of these activities on slides 37, 38, and, and 38. Improving data generation is another critical element uh, of our responsibility. And this we do through the National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, regular reports that are produced like the CPI and inflation report, which is produced monthly, the economic review outlook, which is produced annually, general household survey annual, GDP report quarterly and annually, foreign trade news, access to ICT reports, sectoral wages and emoluments, unemployment, gender statistics, national literacy survey, consumption patterns in Nigeria, and so on and so forth. This is just a few examples to show you what is available, and all of these are on the website 
of the National Bureau of Statistics. And we urge Nigerians to utilize uh, these for data and for any research they are doing. Capacity building is the responsibility, again, of national planning uh, through especially managerial capacity, which is executed through the Center for uh, Management Development. Over the last year, we have conducted over 8,000 management training programs. Uh, sorry, over the last uh, two years. We have undertaken accreditation visits to management trainers and institutions. All management training institutions are required to get accredited uh, by the Center for Management Development. And the center has been taking accreditation visits to uh, management training institutions. They've developed training manuals for several specialized courses and carrying, carried out training needs assessment of all MDAs and states development uh, departments of planning, research, and statistics. They've also undertaken train the trainers awareness raising seminars and conducted train the trainers workshops uh, all over the country. Again, on the next slide, you see examples of some of these training, uh, one for the Nigerian police, a second one for the ICRC. Another important function is trying to strengthen the plan and budget link uh, by working very closely, especially with the Ministry of Finance and the Budget Office, to try and ensure that the longer and medium term plans are executed effectively through the annual budget. And then improving economic management at the sub-national level, uh, the, the National Economic Council which is chaired by the Vice President with all the state governors as members. The monitoring and evaluation of specific FGN projects that I've mentioned, all the water resources projects, the TED Fund projects and other projects. We also hold regular meetings of the Joint Planning Board and the National Council on Planning. This is how we bring in the states to make sure that there is better uh, coordination. We also issue several uh, half-year and yearly reports on the performance of the economy. And these are all on our website. Uh, for example, we've issued the annual report for 2010, the half-year report for 2011, the, half, the annual report for 2011, and the annual report for 2012. We are also working hard now. In the next few weeks, we should have the final uh, performance report for 2012, uh, annual performance reports. And another important area is enhancing public-private partnership in Nigeria by working with the um, Nigerian Economic Summit Group to hold the annual meeting of the, the annual Nigerian Economic Summit. Another one is due in September, uh, and we have uh, the 19th Economic Summit. The 18th one was held in December 2012, and we are planning for the 19th one in September uh, 2013. Something that I should do as I get to the conclusion of my presentation, I should mention the reform that we are taking to deliver on the mandate of the national planning itself. You heard the president say, part of the reason why we are becoming more relevant is because we looked at ourselves as of say, say, if we are going to plan for everybody, we have to make sure that we are doing, we, 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 we change ourselves first. So we started with a, a massive transformation of the national planning commission itself to say how are we going to make ourselves much more relevant in terms of our contribution. This we have done by developing a strategic plan, the increasing use of ICT and, uh, uh, and, and so many other regular meetings that we hold with all the management uh, to carry them along, encouraging needs-driven training, especially focusing on knowledge management. We are the kind of organization where knowledge is very critical. Uh, we are not too many, we don't have a big budget, but at least we believe that we have a lot of 
we have big intellectual capacity because of the kind of staff that we have. Most of our staff are, are that kind, and we have to contribute, especially you go to NISA, several professors that are there sitting, what they are supposed to be doing is really articulating good policy advice for the government. The outlook for 2013 to 2015 is that in the medium to long term, the outlook is very bright, not only for the National Planning Commission, but for Nigeria as a whole, for the Nigerian economy, for Nigeria as a whole. The key benchmarks and targets for May 2013 to 2015 for us are to consolidate the gains made in the last two years, to deepen the institutionalization of strategic planning, to facilitate the realization of the goals and objectives of the transformation agenda and the vision 2020, to deepen the performance management system in the country. Because we have, we have also taken about six states now that we are doing on a pilot basis with this performance management. You can see it's taking good root at the federal level. We are taking it across on a cooperative basis, working with six pilot states, because the country as a whole, all governments need to be accountable to the electorate. And other key targets are ensuring effective coordination of official development assistance, professionalization of the planning cadre, repositioning of the PRS departments in the MDAs, completing the competition of state's GDP, so that very soon we should begin to, to I don't want to mention, some states are around the corner. You begin to hear that the GDP of so-and-so state is so much. Uh, uh, in conclusion, therefore, I would like to say that the National Planning Commission has succeeded in achieving significant aspects of its mandate, especially with respect to the output and outcome targets for the May 2011, or from May 2011 to date. The outlook and prospects are bright in the medium and, and long term, and they will be shaped by the following key targets. Institutionalizing of strategic planning process at all levels, the deepening of the performance management system, ensuring evidence-based policies and decision-making, and strengthening the effective link between the annual budget and the national plans. And if I may say so, already since Mr. President's presentation of the midterm report, the nature of the debate has changed in the country. Because initially what you used to hear is that this government is not doing anything. Now, the editorial, we paid a lot of attention to all the editorial, the comments and everything. The story has now changed to, okay, they have done A, B, C, D, but there is still X, Y, Z left to be done. We, we never said we have finished everything. Midterm, this was a midterm report. And we are also, our eyes are wide open. We know the challenges. Yes, we have achieved growth, but this growth needs to be made much more inclusive. That is true, and, and action is being taken. So, I think here I would like to conclude by acknowledging the tremendous support that we have received from Mr. President and the Vice President, who is the Chairman of the National Planning Commission, and also the, from my colleagues, the Ministers, because my work is such that if, if the other ministers don't cooperate, it's very difficult for us to do anything. So uh, I think my two colleagues who are here, I would like through you to express my appreciation to all my colleagues, and in particular to all the staff of the National Planning Commission, who many of whom are here uh, to be part of this occasion. I thank you very much for your attention. We want to thank uh, the Honorable Minister and Deputy Chairman, National Planning Commission.